We want to use the direct comparison test to determine if the infinite series converges, diverges, or if the test is inconclusive. Before we take a look at our notes though, let's determine what series we're going to compare the given series to. Notice how the given series resembles the series where we have the summation from n equals one to infinity of just n squared divided by n cubed. And notice if we simplify this, we would have the summation from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n, which we should recognize as the harmonic series, or by the p-series test with p equals one diverges. So because we're going to be comparing this series to a diverging series, if we can show that terms of this series are greater than or equal to the terms of this known diverging series, then the given series also diverges. So now if we take a look at our notes, the case that we just discussed is this case here, where if we have a known diverging series, and if we can show the terms of this series given by B sub n are greater than or equal to the terms of the diverging series, our series also diverges. To show a series converges using the comparison test, then we would know that this series converges, and if we can show the terms of our series given by A sub n are less than or equal to the terms of the converging series, our series would also converge. But in our case, because we're comparing our series to a known diverging series, we want to show the terms of this series are greater than or equal to the terms of, in this case, the harmonic series. So we'll say we'll compare the given series to the harmonic series, the summation from n equals one to infinity of one divided by n, which diverges by the p-series test with p equals one, which is less than or equal to one. So we do want to give a reason as to why the series we're comparing it to converges or diverges. So now if we can show the terms of the given series, n squared divided by n cubed minus two are greater than or equal to the terms of the diverging series, which would be one divided by n. If this is true, then by the direct comparison test, our series also diverges. To show this, we'll compare terms of the two series. So notice that when n equals one, for the given series, we'd have one squared divided by one cubed minus two. That would be one divided by negative one or negative one. And the term in the harmonic series would be positive one. So we're trying to show that this term, negative one, is greater than or equal to positive one. And notice in this case, this is not true. Just because the first term does not work does not mean this test fails. We do want to test the next several terms. So for n equals two, here we'd have two squared or four divided by two cubed, which is eight minus two. That'd be four, six, or two thirds. In the harmonic series, we'd have one half. Notice for n equals two, it is true. So now we'll try n equals three. When n is three, we'd have nine divided by 27 minus two, or nine twenty-fifths. And for one over n, we'd have just one third. This is also true. If we're not sure though, we can test this by converting to decimals. Notice nine divided by 25 is 0.36 and one divided by three is 0.3 repeating. So nine twenty-fifths is greater than or equal to one third. Let's go ahead and try one more. When n equals four, we'd have 16 divided by 64 minus two, where 16 over 62 greater than or equal to one fourth, which is also true. 16 divided by 62 is greater than or equal to 0.25. So notice how it's true as long as n is greater than or equal to positive two. So we'll make a special note here and say this is true when n is greater than or equal to positive two, which does tell us by the direct comparison test the given series diverges. So we'll say by the comparison test, or direct comparison test,
the given series, the summation from n equals one to infinity of n squared divided by n cubed minus two diverges. So notice how it is important to recognize that just because it may not be true for the first one or two terms in the series, as long as in this case when n is greater than or equal to two, it is true, and therefore we can still use the direct comparison test. We'll take a look at a slight variation of this where we have plus two in the denominator rather than minus two in the next example. I hope you found this helpful.